Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now you can find older quad core i7 CPUs like this, the 4790, for very little money these days. It may be coming up to its 10th birthday, but slap it in a cheap H81 motherboard with a stick of DDR3 and it'll be more than enough for casual computing. Looks like someone did just that actually with this budget combo, which I paid just £47 for on eBay. Any enthusiasts out there looking for some low cost overclocking fun should opt for the unlocked K variant, as this non-K version is more geared toward a simple out-of-the-box experience, but I want to see what it's capable of in 2023 anyway. Before conducting any gaming tests, I thought it best to replace the memory, so we've got two 8 gig 1600 MHz modules in here now. My first concern was the stock cooler, but it was perfectly adequate. The noise levels were fine, at least in my opinion, and the CPU was able to reach its all-core turbo frequency and stay there in games. I paired the 4790 with an RTX 3060 Ti, which isn't exactly the most balanced setup, but this will allow us to get the most out of this aging chip. Now the first game was CSGO and this was more than playable. If you've had experience with other CPUs, faster, more modern chips, then you'll clearly be able to tell that the frame rate isn't as high as it would be on even modern entry level CPUs. But if you've got a high refresh rate monitor, 144 hertz for example, then the 4790 here can still provide a more than acceptable experience as you can see here with at least 150, 200 FPS a lot of the time. This is a more CPU intensive title of course. Now I thought for sure that the 4790 was going to do a lot worse in Cyberpunk 2077. I thought there'd be more stutters, certainly in those crowded areas, but I have to admit something, I did turn crowd density down to low, and I think that's the best choice for something like this because the more NPCs there are on screen with an older chip like this, the more you're going to see frame drops and inconsistencies with the frame times. But I think it's a small price to pay for a bump in performance. And as you can see here, most of the time we're seeing at least 60 FPS, albeit from when we do venture into those busier parts of the city. Yeah, all in all, it's not too bad. As we come across the bridge and into this crowded zone here, you'll see dips into the low 40s, even with low crowd density, but I think it's a decent experience considering the cost of these chips these days. Now, I've said this before about Forza Horizon 5, but it doesn't really care too much about CPU power. This is more GPU intensive. And even with the 4790 in the system and the ultra settings here, and pairing with the 3060 Ti, it's absolutely fine over 100 fps at ultra in some instances so really nothing to worry about here at all red dead redemption 2 is a little bit the same in that regard in that when you're outside of busier towns that is uh, the gpu is probably going to play a bigger part but as we venture into san denis valentine you might see that cpu usage hover around 90, 95%. So it's clear that there is a CPU limitation here, but we're seeing a more than playable experience in my opinion with over 60 FPS most of the time. Again, I wouldn't recommend a pairing like this, but let's say you've got an old CPU like the i7-4790, you've upgraded to a newer RTX GPU, you could certainly get by until you've either saved up enough to by that newer CPU, or you haven't quite taken the plunge yet for that brand new processor purchase. All right, so what's a CPU benchmark without Starfield? In here, right, you're seeing pretty decent frame rates, right? Look at this, 80 FPS, almost 90 FPS. If we venture outside, however, into Aquila City, which is notoriously CPU intensive, um, just like the other, what's that other main city? How can I not even remember? I've been playing the game for days hence the lack of uploads. But yeah, as we uh, make our way outside here, my mind has just gone absolutely blank there. You can see that the frame rate now, well, it's definitely going to dip. Aquila City is really harsh on CPUs. Usage is sometimes up at 95, 100%, and it is just a little too much for the 4790 to handle. I think the overclockable 4790K would do slightly better, but um, it's still going to be problematic in Starfield which it's early days for of course so maybe some improvements with game updates but we'll have to wait and see. Finally then for these tests we have The Witcher 3 at Ultra with 
the 4790-3060 Ti in and around this busy area here. Now, the frame rate, once again, will start to dip and drop, and there will be some inconsistencies when we venture into those more crowded areas. I didn't actually change um, crowd density, or I, I think you can set it lower, the amount of um, NPCs on screen, but I just left everything as it was. And as we make our way through the city wall here, you're going to see the frame rate start to drop a little bit. But in my opinion, it's still more than playable, you know, it's really not a terrible experience. Considering you can pick these i7 4790s up for, well, less than £30 on their own here in the UK. If you pair it with a weaker graphics card, a GTX 1060, 1070, something like that, then it's going to make for a fairly balanced system overall. And you'll have a half decent time in a lot of games. I actually wanted to finalise with some comparisons to a modern quad-core, namely the i3-12-300. This is one of the best quad-core chips you can buy. And if we take a look on screen at some of these comparative results, it's going to be night and day, to be honest. This was always expected. I, of course, was anticipating this, but I think it's interesting to see sort of how things have changed in terms of what was high-end and what is now... Um, sort of entry level, how how times have changed in terms of CPU performance. But look, the i3 these days will cost at least three times the price of an old i7 4790 like this. Uh, and it's not offering three times the performance across the board, is it? So uh, keep that in mind. But seriously, yeah, um, I think it does a pretty decent job in 2023. The i7 4790 is one of my favorite chips. There's no pressure to overclock with one of these either. It's not the K version. So there's no pressure to sort of go out and buy a higher end board. You just buy something basic, slap it in there, basic RAM, and you're good to go. And that's really all I have to say. I'd still recommend it for a, an everyday system and perhaps even a light gaming rig, of course, paired with a weaker GPU. But let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.